I am Olu Femi Olu Ajobi. First, the headlines. Acton President Yemi Oshin Bajo signs at three executive orders. Three dies and 19 rescued in Ilasa building collapse. Senate investigates alleged loopsided DSS recruitment and in business, a Calabar garment factory to produce for export. On the foreign scene, 60 killed in Libya rival forces fight at U.S. Mogul and co-founder of Fox News, Rogers Ailes, dies at 77. Chinese fighter jet intercept U.S. aircraft. And in sports, Super Eagles to play two friendly matches before meeting with South Africa next month. Stay tuned for the details of this and more. And now the news in detail. In an exercise of presidential authority, Acting President Yemi Oshin Bajo has signed at three executive orders. The others he signed are the promotion of transparency and efficiency in the business environment, support for local content in public procurement by the government, and timely submission of annual budgetary estimate by all statutory and non-statutory agencies. Ahead of the signing, the acting president held an interactive session at the old banquet hall of Presidential Villa with all relevant government officials including ministers, the permanent secretaries and heads of departments and agencies, among others. The session was meant to directly engage government officials who will be implementing the orders and the new instruction. It was a pathetic scene at number 4 Richard Abimbala Street, Ilasa Majai, solo area of Lagos yesterday as a three-story building under construction collapsed, leaving three workers dead and 16 rescued. The incident occurred around 2 p.m. with over 30 workers trapped. The collapsed building affected both buildings beside it as a church and the right was completely crushed, while the building on the left was partially damaged. Residents of the area claimed the construction, which began around February 8, was tilting to one side, and when they raised the alarm, the contractor said there was no problem but added a pillar on the bent side before the unfortunate incident occurred yesterday. When the building started, people were happy. New development is coming. I think you understand. Then after one story, two story, going to three, you know, people like, ah, this house is getting more higher. I think you understand. Then we say, well, this one is three-story building. At least, if this one can stay, this one will stay. And we saw Lego State Builders. They come here, and uh, that was the day they come, and they asked the workers to go out. They see the place. After some time, the place was open. The sole administrator for the Isolo LCDA, Abimbola Oshikoya, however, refuted this claim, saying that the officers could not be compromised. Like you can see, it's a small plot, and they want to build the skyscraper there. Definitely, maybe it's the road. I'm quite sure. When they're about to build this place, the local government they should make sure they come there to check everything. They should make sure that, and as they are doing it, you make sure they should come around and check their materials. The general manager, Lasema, Mr. Tiamiu Additional, confirmed that 16 people were rescued, but were still expecting an excavator for proper recovery for those trapped. As big as this, I understand, is a four-story building. Some people said three, some said four, but we'll get that later. And we understand people are trapped. And uh, we went into action. What we are waiting for now is for the excavator to come in and then begin to clear the rubble so that we will identify whether there are people buried under or not. Three male suicide bombings struck at University of Medjugorje, but their mission was unsuccessful. It was the fourth attack on the school since January. The bombings at about 11.50 p.m. attempted to enter the female hostel but were stopped by eagle-eyed security men. One of them hurriedly detonated the improvised explosive device IED strapped on his body, killing himself and injured three security men. The other two fled off and detonated their bombs near a construction site close to the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. A spokesperson of the Brano Police Command, Victor Isoku, confirmed the incident. The Senate has commenced the process of carrying out a holistic investigation into alleged loop-sided recruitment recently carried out by the Department of State Services, DSS. 
The Senate has mandated its Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs to probe the matter. The decision of the Senate followed a point of order 43 by the Chairman, Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs, the Senator Tijani Kaura, representing APC Zanfara North, who informed the Senate that his committee has been busy with petitions, adding that he was prepared to open a thorough investigation into the matter. Both print and electronic have been awashed with issues that have to do with the recruitment of cadet officers by the Department of State Security Services. I stand before you on behalf of the Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs to assure my distinguished colleagues and indeed all Nigerians that this committee is looking critically into this matter with the intention of ensuring that justice is done in this recruitment. Senate President Bukola Saraki gave the committee to the go ahead to proceed with the investigations. Everybody has been inundated on that, and you keep us posted on your findings and, and, and recommendations. Senate President Bukola Saraki and governors from the Southwest Zone yesterday converged in Ibadan to pay their last respects to the late military governor of the old western region, Major General Adeyin Kadebayo. The corpse was received at the government house at Cade at 2.20 p.m. by the General Officer Commanding 2 Division, Nigeria Army, Major General Martins Abraham, and governors from the southwest zone, led by the host governor, Abiola Jimobi. Paying tribute to the late Adebayo, the Senate President described the deceased as one of those who worked to ensure the sustainability of the nation's unity, urging the younger generations in leadership positions to sustain the legacy of peace and unity, which Adebayo promoted. And now in business, the Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade has said the Calabar Garment Factory is now producing in commercial quantity, including for exports said that the state government was determined to boost its patronage and make the factory economically viable. The governor, who spoke in Calabar after the first rollout of the first set of clothes from the garment factories such as blazers, jean trousers and shirts, added that starting from June 2017, it will be wearing only clothes made from the fan. You've been listening to the Global Update on Fresh 105.9 FM Ibadan. Still to come on the foreign scene, 60 killed in Libya rival forces fight as U.S. media mogul and co-founder Fox News Roger Ailes dies at 77 and his sports super goes to play two friendly matches before meeting with South Africa next month. Stay with Fresh 105.9 FM. It's the Global Update. Welcome back to the rest of the Global Update, reaching you from Fresh 105.9 FM eBadon. Remember, you can be a part of the Fresh FM online community by downloading the Fresh FM Nigeria app to send us eyewitness reports using the iReport feature on the application. Simply go to Google Play Store, the App Store, to download this application which gives you an interactive media experience through Radio Reporter feature, Notification feature and Flashball feature. With these features, you can be a radio reporter by sending pictures, audio, text and videos straight from your phone or tablet to our newsroom. Fresh FM Nigeria also allows you to receive information about latest news and programs directly from Fresh FM Ibadan. And now on the foreign scene. Not less than 60 people have been killed in Libya fight between rival forces in the south of the country. The death toll could not be independently verified. A spokesman for the Libyan National Army Group said an air base it controls at Barak al Shati came under attack. A faction known as the Third First said it carried out the offensive. The area has been a focus of, of tensions between supporters 
of Libya's UN-backed government based in Tripoli and its opponents. New French President Emmanuel Macron is due to travel to Mali in West Africa at the end of his first week in office. French soldiers have been fighting Islamic militants in the north of the former French colony since 2013. It is due to review some of the 4,000 anti-insurgent troops France had deployed in the region. This is Mr. Macron's second foreign trip as president. He is expected to continue his predecessor's policy regarding military presence in West Africa. U.S. media mogul, who co-founded Fox News, Roger, Roger Ailes, has died at 40, 77 yesterday, not less than a year after he was forced out by a sexual harassment scandal. The Palm Beach County medical examiner confirmed that Ailes died of complications from bleeding on the brain following a fallout on in which he hit his head. A long-time confidant of the media titan, Rupert Mudoch, and Al Ail was a central figure in conservative U.S. politics for decades. Syria and its ally Russia have condemned airstrikes by the U.S.-led coalition on pro-Syrian government forces near the Jordan border. Syria said the strikes were a blatant attack on forces fighting terrorism, while Russia said it was unacceptable and a violation of Syrian sovereignty. The convoy was hit on Thursday as it neared a group of U.S.-backed rebels and a Western Special Forces unit in Tanf. The U.S. said Russia was told in advance and that the warning shot were ignored. And now in entertainment, American talk show host and actress Aisha Tyler has been ordered to pay her ex-husband Jeff Tiergen $2 million in spousal support. She would pay him $31,250 per month for over the next four years plus an additional $500,000. The pair would have also split all their assets. Her ex-husband would get half of the money they made from selling their house and a 2012 Lexus which she would get a 2013 Tesla and also keep her companies. The couple who got married in 1992 separated in January 2015 after Jeff filed for divorce last year. In our talking sports, the Nigeria Football Federation (NFF) yesterday affirmed that the Super Eagles will pay, play two international friendly matches against Corsica and Togo, respectively, before the 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifier against South Africa in Huyo next month. Report on Wednesday said the NFF had cancelled the game against Togo as well as a Super Eagles training camp in France. But in a statement issued yesterday, the NFF said the match against the Hawks of Togo has been scheduled for the State Municipal de Saint in Paris on Thursday, June 1, 2017, starting from 7.30 p.m. He added that the Super Eagles chief coach, Salisu Yusuf, will lead a contingent of goalkeeper, trainer, Aloy Agu, own base professionals, Ikechiku Ezenwa, Al Azan Ibrahim, Stephen O'Day, and Sikiro Latibosun and backroom staff to Paris on uh, May 22nd from where they will travel to Corsica. Before we hear the global update, here is the recap of the main stories. Acting President Yemi Oshin Bajo has signed uh, three executive orders as three dead, 19 rescued in Lhasa major building collapse. In business, the Calabar garment factory to produce for exports. And on the foreign scene, 60 killed in Libya rival forces fight as U.S. media mogul and co-founder Fox News Roger Ailes died at 77. Chinese fighter jet has intercepted U.S. aircraft. And in sport, the Super Eagles to play true friendly matches before meeting with South Korea next month. And that's the package for the Global Update on Fresh 105.9 FM. The news was packaged by Victoria David and edited by Samson Akindele. I am Olu Femi, Olua Jobi, thanking you for joining us. Good afternoon.